Re reports are still coming in from police, but apparently I'm being told it is a zombie attack. <laughs> Your attention, please, campers. If you were planning to leave camp today, I am sorry to inform you that all the buses and trains are running late. Very late. It's not the end of the world, though. I don't think. Service should resume soon, hopefully before the undead get to us. Though they seem to be moving really fast and very hungry. Well, you know what we say at camp about mosquitoes and zombies. Wear long sleeves and don't get bit. If you were on the baseball team, your bus has just arrived. Remember, young players, before you leave, be sure to stop by the nurse's cabin for one last temperature check. We want you to be healthy and alive. And please, for the love of God, don't forget to take your bats with you. Hello, and welcome to Bunk 237. Ah! horror movie podcast the uh, imaginary camp that me and robin made up so that we could gossip about horror movies i'm to yet and i'm robin and joining us today is filmmaker so yun um hey so how you doing hey how's it going hey thanks so much for being here today um quick tangent about name pronunciations we were kind of chatting about this earlier but can you pronounce your name your full name again it's So Yun Um, first name So Yun, last name Um, but I just go by So. Uh, I have a similar thing. My name, I introduce myself as um, To Yet Wen or To Yet Nguyen, uh, but that is not correct. That is like not the way you pronounce it in Vietnamese. Um, it is, uh, in Vietnamese, it's like Thuyet Nguyen, but I made a decision like when I was much younger to just sort of go with a phonetic pronunciation because it was easier and I just didn't want to deal with talking to people Same. you know Same. yeah honestly yeah. <laughs> I feel it like is. in retrospect I shouldn't have made it easier for other people but now I'm just so used to it because it's it's something I decided in like the second grade I was like I'll just go by so whatever and it's just been too long it's okay that's that's exactly that is exactly what happened to me um, I was like, oh, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say my name is Tuyet. And then now it's decades later, I was like, oh, maybe I should have made people learn to pronounce it. Um, you but... can do whatever you want. There's still time. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> there is still time. Yeah. Do you think about going back and being like, okay, maybe I'll just rebrand myself with like, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I mean... I, if people just call me so young, I'll just be like, ah, oh, whatever, whatever is fine. <laughs> Usually like yeah. Korea, actual Korean friends or like parents, I reserve that name for my, you know, those people. But I mean, I, it really doesn't matter because it is still my name. Right, right, um, right. And so. That's, yeah, I, whenever, like my parents, my brothers and all my relatives and they call me Thwit, but like when if I ever meet someone who speaks Vietnamese and they say my name back correctly to me, I am like thrilled. Like my <laughs> little heart swells. <laughs> but also like the pronunciation of like too yet, I like, I like, and it's fun and I don't mind it. I have no qualms with it as far mm -hmm. as sort of like, as, as far as it being like my assimilation, you know, into being like a young American. So I've just sort of, yeah, I like, I'm fine with it. Although sometimes I do think about it, like maybe, maybe, but that's okay. Um, but that, also brings us to our film, Train to Pusan, uh, which I was pronouncing with a hard B for a long time until recently. I know, I was too. I, and then I would, I, I was, yeah, I was reading about it and I was like, oh, it's Train to Pusan, correct? Yes. Um, so Train to Pusan is a 2016 South Korean zombie flick, uh, a hedge fund manager and his somewhat estranged young daughter on their way to see his ex-wife and slash her mother and they get caught along with a bunch of other passengers on a commuter train during an aggressive zombie outbreak. Um, they, along with a varied cast of others, have to deal with this suddenly very violent landscape and also with each other, which is, I think, the theme of every zombie movie, right? <laughs> like, um, I also thought that uh, watching a zombie movie, or I realized that watching a zombie movie during a pandemic mm -hmm. and like social and civil <laughs> uprising might be a little bit 
like yeah. two on the nose. Mm-hmm. It was funny, like in the very first shot of the scene, there are all these people in like hazmat suits and masks, and I wrote down COVID vibes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you, I watched this um, for the first time actually at the beginning of quarantine, like back in February ish, uh, and I definitely first I was like angry that I had wasted four years of my life not watching this movie because it's so good. Um, But I also realized I think I might have been extra heightened and very emotional when I was watching it because it was happening. It had felt so prescient, even though it was, you know, it's a zombie movie. Um, Did you guys feel anything, I think, in this current time? Do you think you would have felt differently about this movie if you saw it last year? I actually rewatched it. Um, I, I earlier during the quarantine, and me and my friends were all socially distanced. I started live streaming us watching movies, so that's up on my channel at So's Real Thoughts on YouTube. And so I like we just live streamed me just watching the entire film, and it, yeah, I think there was a lot of it, a lot more anxiety because of this was actually still like during the pandemic, but this was pre uprising. And so it was still really tense. But I think even now feels so much more heightened. Yeah, and there so- are uh, like, thick layers of like social commentary on the film, which does feel even like, uh, so much, uh, so much more tense now watching mm-hmm. it like the social and class hierarchy, the passengers on the, you know, when they to start to divide themselves between like mm-hmm. yeah. the infected and the not infected and like the maybe infected. Um, and then the also the selfishness of the, like the father in the beginning of his story arc um, when he is uh, really like uh, in the mindset of individualism and corporate mm-hmm. culture of like the way he tells his daughter several times, like you have to look out for yourself was like, Oh, that is, that's us. That's us right now. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting because he's like the main character and supposed to be the protagonist, but he's like not really a good guy at yeah. the beginning. Like he learns, which is cool. <laughs> but <laughs> at the beginning, you're like, dude, get it together for your daughter. Yeah. To how much did you dislike And she's him? the one who's telling him like, you know, who's giving that old lady her seat and like, being like, you need to be nice and like think about other people. I like, yeah, I really like the um, the uh, dichotomy between the two of them, where he's just like, you look out for yourself, and she's like, no, but we can be good in this world. I think that's really nice, and I think it's so heartbreaking. Like later on, when he kind of like flips around, it is really satisfying. The other, the other father, the father to be, um, mm-hmm. like when he comes on and he's just like, that's a good guy. I like that character. I think. He was probably He's the best character. <laughs> I love him. He is. Uh, so, what were your favorite characters? I mean, the little girl. I love her so much. So pure and really just an idealistic person. I think even when, even in Korean culture standards, I think that everybody wants to seem like they are good, but they are not. Everybody really is like the father, and you. Koreans in general, even during the pandemic, if you see like they're all looking out for each other in a way, but also they have the same mindset of the dad where if it comes down to it, it is like every man for themselves. And that mentality is so strong and so present in the film. You can really see it when people are so divided um, as the story goes along. So I just thought every, I, I like the fact that every character provided something very different, especially the, um, Man, I don't know his name. The really muscular guy. He's also going to be in um, The Eternals with Angelina Jolie. And so he's really making his crossover in America. And so I'm like so excited about him. But I just really like that you just saw a very masculine guy actually like have such a powerful and positive stance and like is fighting for the goodness instead of I don't know. I guess when I saw him, I was like, oh, let's see what this guy's going to do, if he's going to be, like, bad or not. And I like that they made him good. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because he has a pregnant wife. So you're like, he could take that sort of overprotective route and, you know, just look out for himself and his his wife and his unborn child. But he ends up, you know, being the one who's sort of... um, 
rallies everyone together and stands behind everyone. Yeah, his I love he is like I, he's sarcastic but sincere and mm-hmm. he's like callous but very smart. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, and he's tough but he's sensitive. He has that preg- he like the way he like takes care of his pregnant wife like through and through is like so sweet and it's like he's it's so sweet. It's so sweet. And but I like that he's also like kind of jokey and kind of like when he makes that joke about like that he like she's talking about her pregnancy and he like points at her belly and he's like I did that. <laughs> Which is yeah. so, which <laughs> and I feel like his character was so refreshing to me because he was sort of like the comic relief, but he also felt like a genuine person. Like a lot of times, I feel like in movies, in horror movies especially, the comic relief is sort of like this larger than life, like kind of over the top character. Yeah, like always he goofy, just felt, right? Yeah, wow. and he just he had depth to him. Yeah, I love when he. I also love like how right away he like confronts. Um, the father, like, it, it really early on uh, when mm-hmm. he, like, it doesn't open the door for them right away. And then he, like, gets in the car and confronts them. And he's like, you asshole. Like, what were you thinking? I like how there was no nuance, like, no subtlety there. Just, like, right away getting into his face about this, like, incredibly selfish thing that he was doing. Um, and I like that the, that the father-to-be was, like, the like the perfect hero character. Um, which means, sure. of course, that he has to die. Yeah. <laughs> His yeah. sacrifice was brutal. That was one of the most emotional parts in the film. I cried so many times. <laughs> I cried. It's a really emotional movie for, like, a crazy, ragey zombie movie. <laughs> There's a lot of, there are a lot of, like, slowed down, very emotional points. Yeah. I was definitely sobbing at, like, every death. I also really love, like, the baseball team and the young teenagers. Mm. Um, yeah. they're so sweet. And when they get down to, uh, to when it's just the, the two of them, the guy and the girl, um, it is, and they're just like running around, he's trying to take care of her. And I think one of my sort of favorite interactions there was when they get to the train car with his like zombified teammates. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he's standing there and he's just like frozen in like shock and fear that he like can't it's like these are his teammates and i think that's such a real feeling um Mm -hmm. when sort of confronting your zombie friends (laughs) your former (laughs) Um, let's hope we never find out (laughs) yeah do you guys think that you would survive this specific zombie incident if you were in this train car i would like to think that i would i think in every scenario you're like i can do it but (laughs) Honestly, <laughs> who knows? I feel like in these situations, there's so many factors beyond yourself, especially because you have to deal with other people. And it, even I think in this film, it was so realistic in like the divide and that they're not just fighting zombies, but actually real people who are going against themselves. And eventually, like they end up clashing and it causes more trouble than necessary. And so these things are out of our control. <laughs> I will fight the very end, but you know, you know. also say these are some like fast zombies. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was thinking about it um, because I think the last time it was zombies are, were actually really scary was in Danny Boyle's Twenty Eight Days Later. Right. But I think this time around, it was just. I mean, this was during, I guess, the height of the zombie genre, and. I think just how quickly they turned from humans to zombies yes. were so insane that I think it really like that was the scary part and and like it just made this film that much better because I don't think we've seen zombies turn that quickly and go that fast and that that was like the truly scary part. <laughs> yes, totally. I think cuz they turned so quickly too, there were all of a sudden so many in one spot. Like, you know, like they would take over one car and then all of a sudden there'd be 50 zombies <laughs> trying to get it through one door, which is terrifying. Yeah, the scenes where they're like breaking through the glass every time and there's like the horde of them is yes. like so terrifying and it's especially I thought that was such such kind of like the clever filmmaking of making all these big glass panels so you could see the horde of them starting to pile on and the glass breaking was like my heart the whole time my heart was either like 
super broken or just like super fucking tense the whole time <laughs> like also when they were all like uh hanging on to the end of the train and climbing up the train <laughs> too insane <laughs> i think i think i would die honestly like i want to think oh i would 100 <laughs> percent die <laughs> i just like i don't know if i'm fast enough i think what i do have is like i can be small and quiet so like mm-hmm. in like this zombie world these zombies are they're fast and aggressive, very, very hungry, uh, but they're, like, kind of dumb, and they, you know, they kind they can't see in the dark. They seem very easily distracted, and so I think, like, my one thing that I could do is I could, like, crawl quietly, maybe. But right. maybe I'm clumsy and would be, like, uh, the homeless man in that one scene where, like, steps on the can. <laughs> like, oh, that would be me 100%. <laughs> I would accidentally knock something over and be done. <laughs> But the, that's interesting because they are kind of dumb zombies and like and they don't see in the dark and they also can't smell you like because that you can hide without because I feel like in um in The Walking Dead, they always have to like coat themselves mm-hmm. in like zombie yeah. guts to make sure that they're not being detected. So all you have to do is stay in the dark, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess is hard on a train in the middle of the day. <laughs> Are you are you guys zombie fans? I love zombie movies. Like I, I feel like I've watched every zombie movie out there, and it's a lot. I <laughs> it's feel a lot. The, it's interesting, yeah. It's been so saturated that I'm like, at what point is it going to be reinvented, or like, what else are they going to try that's new and fresh? And I don't think it was until this movie that I was like, okay, you got my attention again, because I was such a Walking Dead fan. Stop watching it, but I just couldn't handle the stress, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. There were also so many episodes of my show. There's a lot of many episodes. And I realized I would always watch them while I'm eating, and I realized it's, like, not a good idea. Like, so yeah. much, just all the guts hanging out while you're eating is just not good. Um, and I feel like even recently, I think it is dying down a little bit, even with Zombieland 2. Like, I don't even know who watched that, but... <laughs> Not me. I did. did you? <laughs> it was mostly Shane's fault. <laughs> um, that's so true, though. Like I was, I was sort of noting the things as I was rewatching this movie that made it feel new and interesting to me. Like the zombies falling off the helicopter. <laughs> like there were these moments that were just so crazy that I was like, yeah, like this movie somehow found, you know, ways to make a zombie movie still exciting and still interesting yeah I felt I felt the same way I was like as someone who also watches a lot of zombie stuff and also all of the walking dead for some reason you know I was like (laughs) I think yeah I think it's also like the class hierarchy that really brought a different element because you get to see a homeless guy you get to see a rich guy you get to see like politicians and like just civilians on all levels being on the same playing field and then it's like what happens then and i think and a tr- yeah and a train is a, such a realistic yeah. way to put all those people together too and it's also uh super terrifying to be stuck on (laughs) while they were raging zombies yeah (laughs) i actually realized when i was in korea i actually took the ktx to puzan (laughs) and it was i guess now thinking about if i was stuck in it i would just be like i have no idea like i would just (laughs) just jump off but that that's something that they did well too in this movie was even though it was pretty contained to the train like you saw news reports and and heard you know saw messages on cell phones that sort of made you realize like this was happening everywhere and like nowhere was safe anymore yeah i really like there's a little detail in it because i think that there are two types two kinds of zombie movies there's like the kind of zombie movie that exists in a world that george romero does not and for some reason, they just like they've never had zombie movies yes. in that in that world, um, and they never say the word zombie. And then there are zombie movies that one hundred percent exist, and they'll joke about it, or they'll immediately know that like the undead is a zombie. And I noticed mm-hmm. this one; they had one very little reference uh, to the word zombie when when at the beginning, and everyone's looking at their cell phones and reading the news, and you can see that it's like um, happening all over Korea, and it's. Uh, there's like a shot of a cell phone and it says like hot, yeah. like what was it? The keyword search, the hot keyword mm-hmm. was zombie. And that was like the only time it was mentioned in the movie. But I thought that was like a very nice thing. Cause I do kind of feel like the first thing that we would do 
first thing I would do in a zombie outbreak would be to check Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, like, is this trending? Does anyone else see? <laughs> It was uh, extremely popular in South Korea and uh, neighboring Asian countries when it came out, like huge, huge box office numbers in uh, Singapore, Malaysia, India, Hong Kong. Um, and then it was re- well received in U.S. audiences. So, of course, they're like, let's remake it. I can't. I'm very, um, <laughs> even any any American remakes, I'm, I feel like so against. It's so weird because the sequel of Train to Busan, uh, Peninsula, is coming out in August. So it's like, why would you, and it's already going to be available in America. So it's like, why would you have an American remake of something that is going to be available to us? I, I, I just watched the trailer for Peninsula. And weirdly, I thought this looks so American. <laughs> it's like, it's very like dark and gritty and mm-hmm. lots of explosions and smoke. And the, it takes place four years later and the world is like decimated. And <laughs> it's just Way like, wow, country. they went. They went big. Yeah. yeah, I was reading. I was reading about Peninsula, and it was a much, much bigger, much bigger budget. And I think that uh, the, the director was quoted as saying something that, like, the budget was like that. There was such a grand scale of what they were trying to do in Peninsula that, like, Train to Busan will look like an indie film, is what he said. I, like, <laughs> I mean, it essentially, is it's like one setting. It's really like so minimal. I always feel I, I watch uh, Train to Busan and Snowpiercer a lot especially because they're just so innovative in the way that they can take one place and make it look look so new and fresh every time. And so, yeah, I mean, to me, I'm like, it is basically an indie film. <laughs> it is. I, the, I really loved the look of this movie. It's It was, to me, different from a lot of zombie movies. Like I said, like I think a lot of zombie movies are sort of gritty and dirty and dark. And this is so bright and, like, colorful and a lot of it takes place during the day. Oh, the whole thing True, takes place yeah. during the day. And um, it just gave it a different feel completely that I really like. Very much appreciated on my end. I think it's really great smart filmmaking if you can yeah. make the daytime scary. You know what? The, the scariest moment for me may have been when they were on the escalator oh my God. going down. And they see all the military uniforms. And oh then all, goodness. like, very slowly you realize that they're all zombies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, being stuck on an elevator, like, trying to go down, <laughs> go up a down elevator. <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. So scary. I agree. That was really scary. I also, like, but did you, in that moment, like, when they're walking into the empty train station, did you guys, were you guys like, don't go into the empty train station? <laughs> I know. But, like, so were they, which I thought <laughs> was so, you know, they were, like, walking around any, like, anticipating any moment that, you know, they would be attacked. And I thought that was very realistic, because, like, what option do they have, you know? You need to stay on the train. And I knew it. You know, you knew it. You knew when, right. when they started to go down that escalator, that was going to be a hard time. That's probably where I would die. I am not. A hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Most euphemistic. <laughs> that was a hard time. <laughs> a hard time. Every character in this movie is having like a hard time. <laughs> it's a tough, <laughs> tough day, tough day on the train. Um, did you guys expect everyone who died to die? I was surprised almost every time. Every time I didn't want them to die, <laughs> but I definitely, I don't know if I expected anyone anyone to survive. When I first watched this film, I was so surprised. I mean, spoiler alert, but the main character dying, I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like the last like 45 minutes of the movie were just like relentless with the deaths and the attacks. And I think the ones that surprised me the most were the baseball player and his girlfriend. Like, because when he, when she got bit, I expected him to get up and run, but he didn't. He just held her until she bit him. I was like, oh no. Very hopeful but bleak and <laughs> yeah. so the obviously the pregnant woman and the child like they must survive at all costs and that was what this whole journey was about that um when they're walking through the tunnel and <laughs> the they get the order to kill them the military gets the order to kill them i was like and i i hadn't remembered that moment and i was like this movie isn't gonna do that <laughs> <is it?" laughs> i was like what the fuck? i thought that too i thought it was gonna be of i thought that was maybe Maybe a little bit of an homage to Night of the Living Dead, uh, you know, when all the characters survive or the main characters survive at the end, but then gets shot. 
Um, yes. By those rangers at the end of that. I thought that maybe that was a little bit of homage there, but I had a similar thought when they said, gave him the kill order. I was like, okay, all right, fine. This is, <laughs> I'm done here. Everyone's dead. Um, I'm glad they did not get killed. Yeah. But I was ex- yeah, I'm glad she was singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> but when she was singing that song, were you nervous? You're like, no, you have to be quiet. <laughs> I did not think about that at that moment. I was like, just don't shoot them. I think in the process of watching this, like we die not because we can't survive, but it's just the emotional burden. Because even with the grandma and her sister, there's just yeah. so much emotional weight that goes into like just seeing your loved one die in front of you. And then it's it's not the zombies. It's just like the overwhelming sadness, I feel. This director is, it's funny because this is his first live action film. A a lot of his films were all animated films, which strangely is way darker than his live action films. And so he did Soul Station, which is a zombie film. And um, that was so dark. Like it was like so dark, but I think there's ways that he, he was able to explore the darkness through animation. So when it was announced that he was going to do live action. I was like, oh man, how, how are they going to do this? Like how, uh, it's such a different process. And I, I mean, that's just a testament to how great of a director he is, is the fact that he was able to transition so easily from animation to live action and still bring that like vision and tension because it's so hard to just make a movie that's that tense at like every step of the way. Robin, what badges? What badges do you have for this? So, um, I want to give the uh, Apocalypse Angel badge to the little girl because she is she remains what, like a, just a pure wonderful figure throughout the <laughs> entire movie. That's so good. Uh, I want to give the uh, take your daughter not to work day <laughs> badge. Uh, I'm glad that he sort of relented in taking his daughter to go see his mother. I think that they probably would have died if they had stayed where they were, so maybe the train was good yeah. for them. But then I guess he also died, so that's kind of a that's a tough that's a tough one. I do want to give this this movie I don't really have a title for it, but like the zombie innovation badge. Cause it is like a a just a fresh take somehow on the zombie genre. Yeah. Where you think everything has been done already. Uh, maybe we can give them the uh, the gymnast badge for being like the yeah. best contorted. <laughs> like they were. Oh, oh man! Uh, when yeah. that one with the his ha- his like whole arm behind his head because it broke because he fell out of the sky <laughs> <laughs> and he's just chasing them. <laughs> so crazy. So, is there anything you want to plug? I know you're you're doing a lot of things. You have films and you have a filmmaking blog or a film review blog. So many. I mean, I'm currently you. Um, I know that you saw my short film, Liquor Store Babies. And I'm currently making it into a feature documentary called Liquor Store Dreams. And so that's currently in the works. Because of this pandemic, who knows when it will come out, but hopefully in the next two years, maybe, who knows. Uh, But I'm really excited. I think it's something that hasn't really been done before, like Train to Busan in a very different way. Um, And so it's, yeah, it's going to be good. Um, I also do, I review movies on my film YouTube channel called So's Real Thoughts. And it's just a lot of genre independent foreign films I talk about. Although I do love like big blockbuster films like Marvel. Um, really am in a Marvel phase right now. Uh, (laughs) I've been there. I know that. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. Shane's always in a Marvel phase, so I am also in a Marvel (laughs) phase (laughs) by proxy. I'm going to also plug um, a few horror films that have been coming out, and they're great. One of them is called Relic. I've heard so much about it, and I can't wait to watch it. Polarizing (laughs) reviews from Letterbox to Twitter. Letterbox hates it. Twitter loves it. I think you should just go in and watch it for yourself. And it's really like a personal experience. I don't like it when people are like, oh, I heard so much about this or like, I don't know. There's so much outside judgment. I I think obviously films are such a personal experience that you just judge for yourself that and 
I have no idea when they're actually going to release this, but one of the best films to come out this year is called Saint Maud. And I think I saw a trailer for that. It's bonkers. Like, wow, one of the best films of this year. And A24 has been pushing it and pushing and pushing it. So who knows when it will come out, but it is look out for it. And of course, um, Peninsula, I can't wait. It, this guy is one of my favorite directors. I actually had the chance to interview him in person at AFI a couple of years ago when oh, he had awesome. um, his animated film, The Fake. And so like just to hear that he was going to make a live action film, I was like, whoa, I cannot believe it. And I've been rooting for him ever since. Who, I, well, I, he's I, nailing I, it. He's killing it. Yeah. His actually his previous film, which he actually tried to do comedy, which worked. It's called um, Psychokinesis and it's on Netflix. And it's so I'm like so amazed at people who can do comedy and drama, especially drama this dark. Because I've seen like how how dark he goes, and I'm like, ooh, guys, like I like something <laughs> needs to. It's weird. There is there is sort of a like the Jordan Peele thing. There 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 is like a connection ooh. between people who do comedy and horror. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, there's maybe if there's something uh, in the personality. If you're sort of a comedian or into comedy, maybe yeah. I think the the common thing that everyone says you already come from a dark place, you know, but. Which yeah. is, you know, why you can kind of joke about it and sort of look at the world through that lens. And maybe that's probably why it, maybe it lends so well to, like, horror. But I... That's fascinating. I, yeah, I love, I love, uh, I love anything that's comedy and horror. <laughs> I love that line. I love that line yeah. between, like, comedy and horror. And if you could, like, just touch it just, just so well. It's such a, like, a skill that I admire in so many people when they can get it right. Kind of like Pong Joon-ho. It's just like this fine line that he's just like on and yeah, so yeah. amazing. So are you still live streaming movies during these quarantine times? I didn't. I haven't uh, done it in a while, but they're all up there. You could literally watch it with me, like turn it on and then turn on a movie at the exact same time. And then you'll see like all my reactions. And I think I cry at one point in Train to Busan because I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, it's coming. <laughs> it is happening. Um, I watched that. And of course, I watched Snow- Snowpiercer because I love Snowpiercer. Just one movie I can always watch again and again. And a couple of others. I haven't done it in a while, but I might. It's really hard to find one film that everybody wants to watch at the same time. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to get back into it. I've been taking a break here and there on my YouTube channel. It's like whenever I want to talk about it, I'll go on. But for the most part, I've been trying to work on more personal projects like my feature film and different things here and there. Uh, Definitely, yeah. Well, I love Train to Pusan, and I would watch it a million more times. So I would love to look up your live stream and watch it (laughs) with you in the past <laughs> <laughs> watch it with you in the past we'll time travel and watch it together <laughs> yeah I think that, that, that would be I think that would be a fun thing that would be an excellent time Bunk 237 a horror movie podcast stars Yuet Wen and Robin Zlotnick as the final girls of Bunk 237 and Chris Charpentier as camp director Chris the show is produced by me Shane Segret our theme song is written and performed by Dan Zlotnick and our outro music is written and performed by Talene Kali. You can rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and it may be featured on an upcoming episode. Have a suggestion for a movie? Then follow us on Instagram at bunk237pod and Twitter at bunk237. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded.